Here we are again in the home of Henry Cantonella down in Warren, Michigan. Former home of the great rap star Eminem. We hope that he gets saved. Amen. Uh, here's his faith partner, his dad, Nick Catanella. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm one of his faith partners, too. I'm just a cameraman. That's okay. Here he is, Henry Catanella again. Words of life for you. Open your ears. Open your hearts. We're going to talk about mountain moving faith today. And, uh... That comes out of Mark 11, 23, our keynote verse about speaking to the mountain. And uh, really, we can look at it that uh, the mountain of uh, fruitless religion is going to get off. If you look at Mark 11, you see that there's a, a fig tree, and when figs have leaves, they should have fruit. Jesus looked at the fig tree, it had no fruit. So he cursed the fig tree. And basically, you might say, you know, uh, fruitless religion, or why no revival? There is revival breaking out, but then there's hindrances, and we feel the hindrances is, uh, is, again, we're going to get a little bit on the subject of uh, legalistic religion or law, which, as we said last week, the law doesn't change you. Uh, when you go to church, you're not perfected by law. You're perfected by the Word. You're perfected by the Holy Spirit. You're perfected by the gifts, ministry gifts in the church, preaching the Word and, and coming to a faith and, and a maturity level by, by being a doer of the Word. So... Um, Let's go over a minute to, uh, and by the way, Mark 11, I should add, was the second temple purge that Jesus had uh, in the New Testament there. He uh, made the scourge through about the money changers and all that, and uh, I guess the house of Annas, uh, you know, kind of a family-owned deal where he was making a lot of money on the side, charging exorbitant rates for uh, religious materials, and then so Jesus maybe purged the temple in that one. We won't go into that subject, that could be another, that could be another message. But uh, Paul goes on to say in Galatians, we'll be jumping there, follow me a little bit as we jump a little bit because of the time, but um, he says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ to another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, this Paul going back to Galatia, uh, the Judaizers said, you know, they couldn't stop him from receiving Christ by faith, but they could try to bring the law in. And of course, they're they're uh, they're trying to gain their affections. Hey, these are nice people. They're helping us, and they do have a gospel, but it's kind of another gospel. It's not the justification by faith one. It's that you're going to get saved by works along the line, and uh, you know that brings in a lot of religious control. And he says there'd be some that would pervert what I said. Just like a lot of preachers don't like, don't pervert what I say, and they trouble the gospel. And if you get into the book of Galatians, it's a book of peeping times and perverts. Those perverting the gospel and those spying on the liberty that they have in Christ Jesus. You know, bringing in certain things and laws and regulations, which, again, we're not against order. The Holy Spirit, by the way, is a God of order. I kind of cringe many times when I hear, oh, well, well uh, Oh, without the Holy Ghost, we don't want none of that chandelier swinging over here. And the Holy Spirit's my friend. I don't swing from the chandeliers with the Holy Spirit. He's he's my friend. He's he's my uh, I commune with him, and uh, he's he's the mortifier of my flesh. In many times, he also is the builder of my faith. Praying in Jude twenty, praying the Holy Ghost, building up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. All right, so um, the law convicts. Let me give you a little example of. Uh, Kind of what I'm talking about. Let's go to the parable of uh, in Matthew 18 where we have the parable of the king that called the count to his servant. And then one of those servants owed him 10,000 talents. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, just like we do in a works mentality, he's telling them, look, master, I'll pay the all. Just give me a little more time. Have patience with me. You know, and I kind of look at my life. And maybe your life, you know, 20, 30 years went by a wasted life that you could have been uh, serving the Lord and other things, again, it could have been drugs, alcohol, your business, uh, any type of thing, uh, manipulation and, and stuff like that. And this time went back, and, and uh, so you're getting kind of called in the carpet. Hey, you, you owe a big debt. We all owe that big sin debt, and we're saying, well, Lord, hey, hey, you know, you're, you're a good God. Uh, give me time to pay for it. And the Lord looks back and he's going, you know, I know this servant can't come up with those 10,000 talents. So as all he did in his grace and his benevolence, he says, you know what, I'm just going to forgive him. 
Now, who wouldn't want a message like that? You've got a debt you can't pay, and that you'll never make and pay off by payments, and then the master goes, just wipe the slate clean. Let's have compassion on this guy and let him go. Now, the problem here, though, is, so you see the grace of God working there, but the problem here, the same servant went out, he found someone that owed him a day's wages, and then put the letter of the law to him, had him thrown in prison, and just, just uh, really just didn't learn his lesson of grace and mercy, and, and did the religious thing to him. Now, you know, this is going to be further brought out. Uh, I'm, I'm bringing a point out about preaching the good news here. You know, Jesus came to bring us the good news of the gospel, that God is not mad at you anymore because of what Christ did for you. And is all he expects you to do is to believe, to believe into him. You know, find out about him. You can read him in the New Testament. Okay, now, to get back to the mentality, Galatians 2.17 says, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are found to be sinners. Now catch this. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. I look at that for a minute. Is Christ the minister of sin? What we find out is grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And when you bring a law thing into it, were they seducing Jesus down to be like they were? Like in other words, did Christ, instead of preaching the good news, did he say, hey, uh, Here's a list of sins. Are you guys transgressing my law here? I'm going to prove to you you're transgressing the law, and you're, you're bringing up that, making Jesus kind of a minister of legalism again, when he came to show mercy. You know, this is depicted in John 8, where you have the woman that's caught in the very act of adultery. And, of course, I know the thing that the man's not there and all that, and, and uh, <laughs> trying to get on the Pharisees some more. But actually, maybe he was a foreigner. Maybe she didn't like any of the local boys anymore, and it was a foreigner, and the Pharisees came and threw her at the feet of Jesus. Now, they got a little catch-22 here. They're going, hey, the law calls for you to stone her. Now, if Jesus doesn't stone her, he's not upholding the law, and they're going to look at him as a weak leader. And then, on the other hand, if he lets her go, um, he's, too, he's too soft. He's on the, again, he's on the weak side of things. He's just too soft. So Jesus... Of course, writes in the sand, looks at these guys, says, look, him that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And then the least to the greatest of them all left. And kind of that's, you know, a lesson today. Him that's without sin uh, in these areas, let him cast the first stone. And so Jesus turns to her and says, sin no more, uh, lest the worst thing come upon me. Uh, that might be a little misquote there, but I'm trying to get... get uh, going, so he tells you just to keep the Torah. Basically, don't stay in that sinful life. But see, they came to her. We want, you know, we want you to kill her, Jesus. And then Jesus sticks true to his ministry and is filled with grace and truth. Forgives the woman, gets her out of the situation, restores her dignity to her. Okay. So again, Christ didn't come to minister sin and legalism and to bring you and 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 to to lord it over you. He came to bring grace and truth. Remember, the gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. And as you saw the man forgave the guy with the talents, then you're also finding that, that we owe a sin debt, a life debt that we can never repay by payments. You can never be good enough to merit uh, salvation. But as you know, the law, of course, does convict you of sin and shows you, it's a gauge to show you that, hey, you know what? There is a hell to avoid, and there is wrath, the wrath of God and judgment. The wrath of God is revealed against against sin all day. So there is that that concern thing. But again, you don't you don't be perfected by mixing this together and be perfected by by working the law in your system of religion and bringing a works mentality in there. You just keep the people on the word and faith and uh, pray and, and go the Holy Spirit's way. And now Paul, you know, we need to look at him. He, introdu he introduces this book. Uh, in a few chapters, the book of Galatians, with with uh, his credentials. He says things like, uh, let's go back to Galatians a minute here. You know, I'm, I was thinking, you know, Paul probably was the smartest man alive at that time. You know, there was Moses, the most meekest man, then there was Solomon, then there was Jesus Christ, uh, greater than Solomon, and then, of course, then here's the Apostle Paul, and uh, he's saying things like, uh, 
But would it please God who separated me from my mother's womb, verse 15, and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. You know, we're not saved by the will of man or the will of flesh, John 1 says that, but by the will of God. Uh, but he separated himself and he went in and, and he got by the he got he separated by the Spirit to find out what was going on. Here, let me say this. Let me go back to verse eleven. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. See, we need to get back to the spirit of things. The le the law in temple order. You can't worship temple order. Okay, and see how eloquent things are going. You got to get into the spirit of things. So Paul, again, to show this, he's laying down his credentials, saying, "I didn't learn this thing by man. I wasn't taught it. wasn't a memorization thing. I was taught it by the Holy Spirit." So he started bringing his credentials, how he separated himself, and uh, uh, again, what was revealed to Paul was what happened through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now that Jesus rose again from the dead, what's the bonus that you have by believing in Christ? See, now Paul had a real heavy ministry. He was saying basically, uh, let's look at, uh, he's saying in a part in Romans, that Romans 2.16, he says, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men, by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Now when you write that in the New Testament, you're saying that the whole world's going to be judged by my gospel. You're either crazy, or you're on some kind of a, a, a spiritual trip, or you know what you're talking about, and therefore I think Paul at the time must have been the smartest man because he could tell you how to get into heaven. He could tell you what happened to your old sinful nature. He could tell you about how all men have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then he could also tell you how to receive Christ by faith, get into heaven, and what that means that, well, that you're now a new creation in Christ, that old things have passed away, that all things have become new. So this was all revealed to Paul, who also went on to say certain things like, Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to, to me for you to fulfill the word of God. So his ministry is to fulfill the word of God. So it's chock full of stuff in there, about uh, about maybe 144 in him, with him, by him, through him, truths, powerful prepositions in the New Testament of who the believer is in Christ. And it's also uh, there to show you that he doesn't want his gospel tampered with. It's, it's justification by faith, and it's going to be you're getting perfected by the Holy Spirit, and you should not be mixing uh, works and faith together to bring about temple discipline, because Paul strictly condemned this in the book of Galatians. And if we can get this mountain out of the way and get back to the hearing of the word in faith, then I believe that there be, will be revival springing out in this land and maybe even in this world, Windsor, Detroit, surrounding areas, 8 Mile. So uh, I want to you know, just take this time that it's John 3.16 says that uh, God so loved the world He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it's believe in the Christ. You hear about Him? You believe it. You believe what He's done for you. That He can change your whole life in a moment's time. He's still that strong. He's the, the judge of the universe. So uh, I thank you for my time. And I, your time, I would pray that you would press in.